The following is an introduction to solving ordinary differential equations with Excel. An ordinary differential equation is where we have a, ver a function like dy dt equals f of y and t. So here, y would be our variable that we're trying to solve for, and f of y and t is some function. When we have an ordinary differential equation, we have an initial condition, y of t equals 0 is y 0, or y not. And our goal is to solve for y as a function of time. Let's give a quick example. Suppose I drive home at a constant speed of 30 miles per hour. I want to find my location at each time t. In this case, dy dt equals v, where y is my position, t is time, and v is my velocity. At time 0, my initial position is y0. We can solve this equation analytically by separating variables and integrating. To separate variables, we put the dy on the left-hand side of the equation, and the v times dt on the right-hand side of the equation, and then we integrate both sides from y0 to some position y, and from t equals 0 to some time t. If we do this, we get y minus y0 equals v times t, which we can rearrange to the final form, y equals y0 plus v times t, just a linear relationship. My position increases linearly with time when I have a constant velocity. Now, v could vary with time and be some nonlinear function, in which case we would just write dv dt equals v as a function of time, and then when we perform the integration, we need to take into account the functional dependence of v on time. Now, we can't always integrate analytically. Either we might not be able to, if it's nonlinear, or we might have multiple variables that we're trying to solve for, or it just might be easier or fit in our existing approach to use a numerical method. So we're going to focus here on solving using a numerical method. And here the method that we'll use is called the explicit Euler method, abbreviated EE. We can use a numerical method by taking a series of discrete steps in time where we assume that f of y comma t is constant over the step. So for instance, we might have given steps uh, indicated by these stars, where the step index would be time 0, time 1, time 2, time 3, time, and in general we have time n and time n plus 1. The corresponding time would be time 0, and then delta time, 2 delta time, 3 delta time, n delta time, n plus 1 delta time. To apply this to our ordinary differential equation, we approximate dy dt as delta y over delta t. In order to find differentials, this is what we did before taking the limit as delta t goes to 0. So here we have delta y over delta t, indicated by delta y for the given delta t. So we have y in general, we have yn plus 1 minus yn, that is yn plus 1 minus yn, divided by delta t is equal to this function f of yn comma tn, where we're taking f at the old time that we know. If we then solve this for our unknown, which is the new time, then we have yn plus 1 equals yn plus delta t times f of yn comma tn. In the above example, we would have yn plus 1, my new position is my old position, plus delta t times the velocity. The smaller we make delta t, that is the more steps that we take, the more accurate the solution will be. And at any given time step n, we know all the information we need to compute the variable at time step n plus 1. That's why we call this an explicit method. This is a really important point. That is, at the very beginning, we know our initial condition. We know the value of y at t0, and that was from our initial condition. So that gives us our starting point. Then that would be time 
in this case times zero is time n, and in order to find the new time, n plus one, we have the initial time zero plus delta t times f at position zero, which we can evaluate. So we have everything that we need in order to make the step to the new unknown. Then that new unknown becomes our starting place to go again, and we step sequentially. So we know this, and we know f here, so we can step to the new value. Now we know everything at the new point, and we can step to the next value. And we know everything here, and step, and so on. So in general, n plus 1 depends on the values we know at n. To give another example, we can look at radioactive decay of an isotope with some concentration, C of t, and initial concentration, C at time 0 equals C0. Here the differential equation would be dc dt equals minus c over tau, where tau is a decay constant with units of time. The exact solution, if we in integrated this analytically, would be c equals c0 times e to the minus t over tau. The numerical solution at various step locations would be cn plus 1 equals cn plus delta t times the quantity minus cn over tau fitting it into the same form in the blue equation, yn plus 1 equals yn plus delta t times f of yn comma tn. In this case, f of yn comma tn is minus cn over tau. We can extend this example to two variables. Say we have variables y of t and z of t. In this case, we would have two differential equations, dy dt equals f of y z t and dz dt equals g, a different function, of y z t. Here we also need two initial conditions, y0 and z0. In general, when we have two or more variables that we're solving for, we want to write that in a vector form as follows, where we're missing a d here. dy vector dt equals the vector of functions, which are a function which each element of our functions of the vector of unknowns. So to write this out in component form, we would have dy1 dt equals f1, which is a function of all the y's, y1, y2, y3, to ym, and time. dy2 dt is f2 of all the variables. dym dt is fm times all the variables. And the numerical solution will be written out in the same way. Why the new values of y are the old values of y plus delta t times the individual functions. Again, all the information is known on the right-hand side because we always know all the information at our current time, starting with the initial condition. So we can step these to find the new solution. Mm -hmm. Now note that the functions, f1, etc., don't have to actually have every variable in them. For example, f1 of y1, y2, y3, etc. could just be 5.5, or it could equal y1 squared, or it could equal y2 plus t, etc. The notation is just that, in general, f1 is some function of all or some of the variables and time. And this should help when trying to write the specific set of equations in the form that we're interested in for solution. In the next video, we'll, uh, we'll solve these equations in uh, Excel and show an example of doing